Have you ever wondered how game designers turn their landscapes from just nice to wow, this is a beautiful environment? Today, we unlock the secret together. I'm Josh, and in this exciting tutorial, we're diving into the lush, vibrant world of foliage in Unreal Engine 5. But here's the twist. We're not just adding plants, we're transforming our entire landscape into a living and breathing ecosystem. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll be able to take your scenes from ordinary to extraordinary. Let's turn the Unreal into reality. Welcome back to Ranger Realm Studios. Today, we're diving deep into the lush world of foliage in Unreal Engine 5. Whether you're crafting dense forests or a serene park, we've got you covered. So let's bring our scenes to life. Foliage in Unreal Engine 5 is more than just greenery. It's about adding depth, realism, and dynamism to your scenes. Let's start by exploring the foliage tool in the modes panel. We'll find it at the top toolbar in the drop-down menu underneath the landscape. Once in the foliage mode, you can start adding foliage and start painting it onto your landscape. Before we talk about all of the tools available to you, let's add some foliage into our project so we can start painting it. For high quality assets, you can turn to Quixel Megascans as we did in our last video, or you can check out the Epic Games Marketplace for more options. They offer several free ones and sometimes have amazing sales going on. So go ahead and find one that you like. I'm going to be searching for foliage. Make sure it's free. And then I'm going with Landscape Pro 2 auto-generated material. These assets are game changers for realism in your scenes. So go ahead and add it to your project and I will see you when it's done. Now, before we can paint anything, we will have to add the foliage to the panel. You can do this either by clicking on the plus foliage icon and adding all of the different meshes, or you can open your content browser Go to the new folder you just imported, and this in our case it would be STF, Pack 03 Landscape Pro. I'm gonna go under Environment, Foliage, and then under the search bar, type in Mesh. And this will bring up all of the meshes that you have available as your foliage. So go ahead and select all of them by clicking the very first one, scrolling down, then holding Shift, and clicking the last one. And then simply drag and dropping it where it says drop foliage here. Select the foliage you want to use and check it off in the activation box. It's gonna be the left box inside of the foliage itself. Do this for all items that you wish to paint onto your landscape at one time. Think of it as a cluster. If you select various bushes and trees, it will paint those bushes in a cluster. Now with the single option selected, you can place a single piece of foliage on the landscape. You can go for the all selected option, or you can change it to cycle through your selected options, which will then paint various different ones at random, cycling through options you have available. The erase brush does exactly what it says. It will erase all of the foliage you have. And you can change the erase strength by adjusting the erase density. Zero will erase everything, and the higher you go, the less it will delete as it maintains the density at a higher level. In order to paint quicker than placing single pieces all over your map, you can select the paint tool. By default, it will randomly place all of the pieces you added to where you paint on your terrain. You can change that by enabling the single instance mode, which will then bring you back to the single placement. Also, by holding shift and left clicking, you can once again erase all of the things you painted onto your landscape. By changing the paint density and your brush size, you can modify the way you're painting onto the terrain. You can decrease the paint density to have less foliage be painted within the brush, or you can increase the density to really have the entire brush be filled with foliage. Now with the select mode, you can then select individual pieces of foliage that you have on your map, and you can manipulate them by moving them around, rotating them, scaling them up or down. By clicking select all, you will select all of the foliage that you have already painted. Deselect will deselect everything. And then with the lasso tool, 
we will get your paintbrush back and then you can select based off of your paintbrush. Using the fill tool, you'll be able to fill a selected piece of land and then by pressing remove, we'll delete everything that was selected. And with the move, you can move all of your selected foliage to a new level. So now go and try it out for yourself and paint some foliage onto your terrain. Change out the foliage you use to add some variety to your world and make it come to life. So now that you painted all of the foliage onto your terrain, bear in mind that optimization is key. The way you can get a beautiful world without sacrificing performance. Depending on the assets you use, make sure they have good LOD settings. If you paint some large clusters of trees and start zooming out, you notice how the details and the models themselves start to change. This is due to the level of detail or LOD of the models. As you move further away, the details drop to a lower quality to not tax the system too much. This is very important for large scenes and open spaces where you have a lot going on. Additionally, you can modify the call distance for better performance without sacrificing the quality. The call distance will stop rendering an object after a certain distance. So if the player is miles away, there is no need to keep rendering certain foliage as they will never see it from that far. We adjust the call distance by selecting the foliage we wish to affect, which is basically all of it. So select all of your foliage, then go ahead and zoom out to a distance where you think the player won't see your foliage anymore. I think this is good. Scroll down the details panel to the instance settings. And here you will find call distance. We'll leave the minimum at zero and start increasing the maximum. And you see this would be like one meter away. So naturally the player will not see any of the foliage. And just increase this number until you start seeing the foliage again in the distance of where you would like for it to be accepted. So in this case, right around 11,650. And as we move down more and more of the foliage will appear as we get closer to it. So if you go ahead and hit play, we will see all of the foliage that is nearby and we will never see anything that is beyond the 11,650 meter mark. Meaning that the foliage that far away won't be rendered and it won't be as taxing on your system. Especially if, if you have a large open world that is seemingly never ending. Bear in mind, foliage isn't just decoration, it's part of your level design. Use it to guide your players, create an atmosphere, and even tell stories within your game world. And that's how you turn a bland scene into a vibrant ecosystem in Unreal Engine 5. You found this tutorial helpful? Smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. What kind of environment do you think you'll use in your future games? Are you aiming for a forest environment like we did? Perhaps a desert or a tundra? Let us know in the comments below. Got questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to ask, we're here to help. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep dreaming, keep creating, and keep it unreal.